Welcome back to A Gut Feeling. Thank you guys so much for being here. If you haven't done so already and you've listened to a few episodes, I would love for you to leave a review. You can do so by heading to the podcast and just leaving the review of your choice. Let me know what you think about the podcast so I can keep bringing you the best flavor to heal your gut. Now, you guys know that I am no stranger to digestive issues. If you've been listening for a while, you know I tried everything throughout my life to heal my gut. And trust me, I've been on every diet there ever did exist for healing the gut. And, you know, while I was healing my gut, I was actually destroying my hormones. So many of these diets were destroying my hormones. They were putting me in a bad place with my blood sugar. They were creating more painful periods. And I was very confused why. Like here I am working on my gut health and my hormones are failing. This is when I was introduced to cycle syncing. A while ago, about 10 years ago, I was introduced to cycle syncing and I was blown away. Here is a way to manage your gut health issues and to keep your hormones balanced at the same time. So today I was like, I need to have Rachel on. She's a fertility awareness method educator. She's a holistic hormone health coach and hormone expert. And of course, my dear friend, you guys have heard her on the podcast before, Miss Rachel Duda. Thanks for being here. Hi, Jack. I'm so happy to be here. Me too, because this topic is so important for women, especially if they're in the gut and hormone healing space. So just to give you guys a little background, Rachel, she helps women come off birth control. She helps them empower their hormone journey, whether they want to get pregnant or not. And so it's really important to understand why this is related to gut health. I feel like people will either be, I'm healing my gut or I'm healing my hormones. They're never really like simultaneously doing it, but this is why it's so important to do it that way. Is that your experience as well too? Yeah. I think a lot of people just don't realize the connection. And a lot of people don't realize that when we are healing one part of the body, we're usually looking at the entire body as well. So yeah, I definitely have had that experience. Yeah, absolutely. And this is why cycle syncing is so amazing for anyone on either journey or wanting to do both, because I know you are specifically working with clients with hormone issues, but they'll say, I also have gut issues. And then I'll work with clients who have gut health issues and they're like, I also have terrible periods or whatsoever. So cycle syncing really connects them together, which is why I wanted to have Rachel on the podcast. I actually will let her talk today, I promise. <laughs> today, I want to have her talk about the how, the reason why. We're going to dig into things like infradian rhythm, circadian rhythm, your cycle, why we're different from men. We're going to dig into so many topics related to that, why it's related to the gut. But then next month in August, Rachel is going to be the guest speaker inside the JRW membership. The membership is a great low-cost monthly program group where you can come into a like-minded community. You can be supported on your gut and hormone healing journey. And of course, we have guest speakers every month that will teach us more. So whatever you learn today, this is the how of everything that happens. And I'll talk about it a little bit more later in the podcast, but she will be speaking on August 17th on the how. How do you empower this journey? So with that being said, if you're interested in the membership, you can click the link below. And now let's dive right in. Shall we? Let's do it. Let's start from the beginning. Okay, let's let's go all the way to the beginning of women's health and women's time. Can you just explain this for us, like this whole cycle and what we have going on with our rhythm and why it's so important? Absolutely. So we're all familiar with the circadian rhythm, right? That starts the day we were born and it's going to continue until the day that we die. So can we just give a little like one minute pitch about what the circadian rhythm is? Yeah, I mean, to put very simply, we all know that we get tired at the end of the day, right? We all know that if we were to go to bed at 3 a.m. and wake up at 7 a.m., we would feel absolutely terrible. And we're all aware of that. Maybe some of us struggle with sleep, but we all know that we need sleep. It is what regulates our sleep patterns. So that's kind of what our circadian rhythm is to put very simply. But a lot of women don't realize that they have another clock. They have another biological clock. And that is known as our infradian rhythm. This is tied to our monthly menstrual cycle. And it is so important to treat with the same love and respect 
as our circadian rhythm. This is something we weren't taught in school. We weren't taught that our hormones change throughout the month. We have four different phases of our menstrual cycle. As we transition into each of these phases, we feel different. There are certain times where we feel more introverted, certain times where we feel more extroverted, times where our libido is higher than other times, times where we need more rest, times where our body is able to gain muscle easier. So in your membership, we're going to be chatting about all the ways to implement cycle syncing into your life. But today, I know we really want to talk about the connection to gut health because a lot of the people here, obviously, if you're listening to this podcast, you are dealing with some kind of gut issue. Absolutely. That's amazing news for us. This is very important for everybody to kind of take this in. So we have the infradian, the infradian rhythm. We have the circadian rhythm. We have both of those. Do men have both of those too? Men do not have both of these. And that is why it can get really confusing sorting through all of the different workout plans, all of the different diets, all the ways to eat, understanding our cravings. We are not tiny men, (laughs) right? Our hormones are not the same. I like to think of men like the sun. They have this 20 four hour clock. It's the same rotation every single day. Testosterone high in the morning and then it gets lower throughout the day. But as women in our childbearing years, we're more like the moon. So we have this monthly clock. And I also want to mention too, when we say 28 day, that is 28 days on average. Not everybody has a 28 day cycle and that is okay. And that can still be perfectly healthy. But as our hormones are changing and as we are moving like the rhythm of the moon, we feel different and we are not like these robots that just feel and act the same way every day. Our physical health changes, our mental health changes. And it is so, so important to be aware of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So basically what you're saying is men operate on the 24 hour, their circadian rhythm. Women operate on both. We have the 24 hour and the 28 day ish cycle, which means that if we were to do a plan that was the same every day, whether it's an eating plan or a workout plan or, you know, some kind of diet or protocol, we would actually be doing our body, our weight, our gut healing, our hormones, a disservice because as the systems fluctuate, we're actually not nourishing them in the right way. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Our body is changing all month long. As we transition into each phase, I like to say we have different gifts, but we also have different needs for our body. And understanding that is a complete game changer for every single area of your health. So it feels like a good time for us to break down the four phases of the cycle right now so that we can understand that on a deeper level. What does that really mean? Let's go through the four phases of the cycle because this is the infradian rhythm that we need to be following. So can you break those down for us a little bit? Yes. So essentially we have these four phases. The first phase that we'll go over is our menstrual phase because we all know what our menstrual phase is. This is the phase when you are bleeding. And this is also the time where your hormones are at their lowest. After our period, we enter what is called the follicular phase. And this is when your follicle is developing. I feel like we all know that feeling after our period. We're just like, yes, I feel like myself again. Like, let's go. I just came out of hibernation. <laughs> so that is because of our beautiful estrogen hormone that begins to rise. Then after our follicular phase, we enter our ovulatory phase. And this is when our estrogen is at its highest. So this is the time where we generally feel like the most on fire. We are ready to get in some good workouts. We may be feeling more extroverted. We are just fill in our best self. And if we think about it biologically, our body's kind of like, let's make a baby. (laughs) So it's a great time to kind of just get out there and, you know, your libido is higher during this phase as well. Um, And then after our ovulatory phase, we enter our longest phase of our cycle, which is our luteal phase. And this is the time where our hormone progesterone kind of steals the show. This hormone is so, so important 
for helping us be happy during our luteal phase. I like to call it our keep calm hormone. So if you are somebody who feels like you get more anxiety before your period, you feel like you have trouble sleeping before your period, that could potentially be an imbalance between your progesterone and estrogen. So our luteal phase is kind of a time where, you know, I like to break it up in two halves. The beginning, you kind of still feel energized, still feel pretty good, but it's really as we get closer to the end of that luteal phase is where our hormones start to drop. And we really need to spend time going inward, taking better care of ourselves. Absolutely. You know, it's funny you say that about ovulation. And when ovulation comes around, I'm always like, why do I have, feel the need to do 500 things right now? And like, why is everyone attractive to me? And why, am I, you know, it's like, wow, for these like three or four days, you're just like superhuman, which is amazing. And I think that it feels so good for women to feel like this. But but then when the next week comes around and we're supposed to go into more of a hibernation mode, more into that keep calm and carry on mode, we start to feel guilty. Like, well, why was I so productive last week? Why was I so amazing last week? And why did this week I just want soup and pajamas? So many women will have guilt on themselves or put shame on themselves that they should be you know, we don't should ourselves over here, but like that they should be doing more. But what you're saying is that they're actually pushing against the natural infradian rhythm and causing more problems. Yeah. And sometimes less is more. And I have to say, like, I used to feel all of those things. I remember when I first heard about cycle syncing, I was actually initially a little bit angry because I was like, wait, so I can't just do all the things all the time. Like, why can't I do that? And I fought against it. But as soon as I started getting in tune with it and I started honoring each phase and their gifts, I found that I actually won was able to work out less and get better results. I was able to improve my mental health. I was able to be more productive of a person. It really helped me to go about my life more effortlessly. And I think that society kind of just teaches us that we should wake up and feel the same every day, right? We should have the same routine. We should have the same workout plan. And that is truly just not how us women in our childbearing years work. And once you understand understand that and you start to cycle sync and see how your phases affect you physically and mentally, it will really, really be the most empowering thing. I felt that way once I started cycle syncing too, where I was like, wow, like there's so much power in this. Like you literally become more powerful as a woman. One of the things I see all the time for women that come into my program right away, if they're burnt out or they have gut health issues, hormonal imbalance, migraines, whatever the symptoms may be. I often immediately can tell just from them sharing a lot about what's going on in their life that they are definitely more in the masculine energy. Mm -hmm. And being in the flow of your cycle is being in the flow of your feminine energy. And for women, we do want to have a masculine feminine balance. But when you are geared more to the masculine, that's when disease happens. That's when I see the symptoms come in. That's when I see there's more distress in the body. And so like, as you were sharing and saying, oh, I was mad. I want to just do all the things all the time. But then I realized once I take into consideration this flow, this feminine flow, be in the flow of my cycle, in flow of my 28 day cycle, I actually became more powerful thinking I would be more powerful over on the other end. But here I am being more productive, feeling more into my body in this way. So it's, it's actually incredibly empowering. It really, really is. I like to say, you know, for me, it really helps me step into that femininity, but also just like really embrace this like beautiful goddess energy. And I would say that I naturally would be somebody who is a little bit, tends to be a little bit more in their masculine, but understanding my hormones has really allowed me to embrace that feminine side of myself. And I find that with all of the women that I have taught this to, it really allows you to step into that. And it's so beautiful to see and experience. It's not just cycle syncing to say, okay, I don't want to have a bad period, but you become more productive in business. You become more productive in your social life. You become more productive with your relationships. You are happier and you're more joyful. So, and in your workouts become more productive. So it's not just like, oh, let me heal my gut and my hormones, but there's also so many other aspects that just feel like they flow in your life as well. So many other aspects, setting boundaries. I could go on and on. People understand the rhythm now. They understand the cycles, but 
maybe they're not putting two and two together of the ways that they're ignoring this. Cause they could say, no, I'm totally in flow with my cycle. I track it. I do all these things, but how are they specifically ignoring this? What are common things that women do to ignore this? Well, I think it kind of goes back to what I was talking about is a lot of times we feel like we have to be these robots who feel and do the same thing every single day. And a lot of women who come to me, they are healthy. They do live healthy lives, but there's some things that there's some roadblocks that they're hitting. Like they still can't get their hormones in balance. Their cortisol is all messed up. They have gut issues. And really one of the main things that I see is that they're not honoring these changes. They're sticking to these workout plans and they're like, okay, I have to get in my five day a week, whatever, hit workouts or CrossFit or whatever they're doing, or they're counting their calories and they aren't taking into consideration that their caloric intake changes throughout the month. We need to consider all of these things in order to reach your fitness goals and and get rid of your period pain and heal your gut. One hundred percent. And where I see it in in my, you know, my, I think my average client is a little bit older than the clients in your program. But as what happens is it really starts at the age range that you really coach. And then as it gets older, one of the biggest things that I see is weight loss resistance, the inability mm -hmm. to lose weight because they fought against their cycle for so long and restricted calories when they needed more towards their menstrual phase or did the same workout every day when they needed to back off and do more soft and yoga or I have to walk 12K steps every day when like they really don't want to do any walking on their cycle or just enough to get their blood circulation going. So these extreme things that we do to push diet culture and shame on our body to like get results of gut healing, hormonal imbalance or weight loss. And we've been doing the opposite, which is exactly what I was explaining in the beginning um, is what I did was, okay, I'm going all in on low FODMAP. I'm going in on the, the specific carbohydrate diet for SIBO. I'm going all in on the candida diet. I was restricting carbs. I was over exercising. I was under nourishing my body and ended up with hormonal imbalance. And this is exactly what we're talking about with Rachel. In the JRW membership next month, kind of like I said in the beginning, this is exactly what Rachel's gonna teach us. She's gonna teach us how to exercise for our cycle in each phase. She's gonna teach us what to eat and how much to eat in each phase of our cycle. The more you lean into it, which it's the anti-diet, it's the opposite of feeling restricted, the more the weight comes off, the more the gut heals, the more the hormones soften, and you can get into that flow. So again, just check that link below to join the membership. She's going to be joining us and sharing each four of these phases. So you're okay. obviously listening to a gut feeling podcast. So you know, every single person I have on here, we're going to relate what we're talking about to gut health. So we've been sitting here talking about our cycle, sitting here talking about our infradian rhythm. How specifically does this affect our gut health? Well, first off, cycle syncing is incredibly helpful for managing your cortisol levels. Cortisol, a cortisol imbalance can create dysbiosis in your gut and affect your hormones. So we know that cortisol is a tier one hormone. And what I mean by that is that it has a downstream effect on all of our other hormones. So when cortisol is out of balance, that's going to make it really hard for other important hormones like estrogen and progesterone to be in balance. And if we think about it, you know, reproduction is not a priority for our body. We don't need to reproduce to survive. So when we have imbalanced cortisol levels, what is that telling our body? That's telling our body we have other important things to focus on. We're in fight or flight. We don't have time to get your hormones in balance. So when our body is pumping all of those cortisol levels, as I mentioned, it's going to have an effect on your gut. It's going to have an effect on your hormones. And back to cycle syncing, how this all relates is our cortisol levels also change throughout the month. Our cortisol levels are fluctuating with our cycle. So in the beginning of our cycle, our cortisol levels are a little bit lower. But as we get towards the end of our cycle, our cortisol levels are higher. So we need to understand that in order to help us manage that with our lifestyle our diet and our exercise routine as well. So just to give you one quick example, if we were to be doing tons of intense cardio 
towards the end of our cycle, when our cortisol levels were already really high, that's going to increase your cortisol even more and cause even more of an imbalance. So not only making you more stressed, but also depleting your important hormones like progesterone, that keep calm hormone I mentioned earlier. So everything goes together. Would this be like a place where a woman might see like, oh, I'm having intense cravings or I feel really exhausted or I just, you know, feel like, you know, just kind of that feeling of blah or having like intense cravings. Is that where you would see that is when someone's cortisol is a little bit in overdrive when they're getting close to their period? That can definitely be a symptom of a cortisol imbalance. That also kind of leads me to the next correlation, which is blood sugar. Let's talk about it all. We need to know. Tell us the things. All righty. Blood sugar imbalance is also very important. You know, Jack talks about it all the time for your gut health. And it's also so important to look at when you're balancing your hormones because insulin, which is the hormone that regulates blood sugar, is also a tier one hormone. And insulin and cortisol kind of work together here. So when our cortisol is out of balance, then our blood sugar is also going to be out of balance and vice versa. Kind of going back to that cortisol, at the end of your cycle, if your cortisol is high and you're not managing it, all right, well, then your blood sugar is also going to be out of balance. And then you're going to start getting those intense cravings. So we have to really look at both of them. They really, really do go hand in hand. And so what are a few things that would create, you know, if a woman was like, well, how do I know that I am contributing to my blood sugar imbalance? What are like a few things that women do on a day-to-day -day basis that maybe are normalized that are things that contribute to a blood sugar imbalance in women? Well, drinking coffee on an empty stomach. I used to do that for years and years. Intermittent fasting, skipping meals, not prioritizing eating healthy fats and protein. Those are some big ones, um, but also stress. Because if you're stressed, that is also going to release glucose in your bloodstream and cause imbalanced blood sugar. Those are just a few reasons. I think everyone listening was just like, oh, crap. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> running on those stress hormones, ladies. Just <laughs> popping the coffee and running around and doing all the things. Um, yeah. But I will say this. You know, it can be really overwhelming for women to think, oh, like I have to change all of these things to get better and to do all this stuff. To be honest, and I'm sure Rachel can really to this too. It's sometimes just a few small shifts, like a few little things, adding a little extra protein, taking your coffee a little bit later, you know, drinking a little bit more water, making sure you're not running around as much. These tiny little things that can change your blood sugar imbalance so much. It doesn't have to be this all or nothing mentality when it comes to it. Yeah. And I'm sure you experienced this too, Jack, but I have so many women come to me and they're like, what's the best supplement? What's the one thing I can do? And they want us to give them this crazy answer that they've never heard, <laughs> you know? And sometimes it really does come back to these basic foundational things. Like, are you eating breakfast? <laughs> yeah. Right? The, the, the magic pill, everybody, it's breakfast. <laughs> or basically what you do in the first two hours of your day. Truly, truly. Yeah. And I also want to talk a little bit about how blood sugar changes throughout the cycle, because I think this is something that is really not talked about. And we all know for a lot of us, I mean, whether you experience it now or you experienced in the past, cravings can be really intense before your period. And yes, a little bit of that is normal. We do need more calories towards the end of our cycle, but we also want to take in consideration that our blood sugar is changing. Essentially, in the first half of our cycle, we have this higher estrogen, and that actually increases our insulin sensitivity. And then in the second half of our cycle, our hormone progesterone actually decreases insulin sensitivity. So we are more prone to those blood sugar swings and drops. And we do need to do a few extra things to make sure that we're keeping that in check. And when we keep our blood sugar in check, and we really even focus on it more in the second half of our cycle, that's going to help us with keeping our progesterone levels where they need to be. It's going to help us with our cortisol levels. So helping us to not be super anxious or stressed before our period. And it's going to help with, you know, cravings, all the things. 
Absolutely. And by the way, just for whatever age of anybody that's listening, this is before you have a baby. This is during a baby. This is after a baby. This is perimenopause. This is menopause. Like this is just being a woman and it's just honoring this flow. So you're not null and void from this. If you're in a certain era of your life, it's really just how we maintain good hormonal health and a byproduct of that is having a healthy gut as well too. You know, one of the things I wanted to mention before we talk about estrogen levels is diet culture. You know, I talk about it a lot on my podcast. I talk a lot about it in my program. Like you just mentioned before, having, you know, these all or nothing mentality. Oh, can you give me a magic pill that will magically fix my cortisol or magically fix my hormones or get me to get rid of these symptoms that I'm experiencing from coming off birth control or fix my gut or anything. We are just as a society always looking for the quick fix or the quick answer. And this is always heavily related to diet culture. It's like, how can we lose the five pounds really fast? How can we fix the gut really fast? But the truth of the matter is, you know, Rachel, Rachel and I wouldn't be here having this job if we didn't know that it does take time. So if you're here listening, thinking, oh, I have not been able to get relief in my symptoms. I haven't been able to get to the place where I need to be with my gut or hormone health. Just know that you're on the right track and it takes time to get there. You know, my healing journey took five years plus. Rachel, I don't know about for you when you were working on all your stuff, how many years did it take you to kind of get where you needed to be? My journey started when I was in first grade. Truly, I was, I had the worst gut issues and my parents took me to Stanford hospital. They did all these testing and nothing, nobody was helping me. And I just got, just was left with this long list of food sensitivities. And I was like, cool, now I can't eat anything. And I'm like six years old. (laughs) So it really started then. I didn't really have a huge awareness on how to support my body until I would say middle school, I started really paying attention to, okay, what foods make me feel good, what don't. I was kind of just known as this health freak and my parents didn't understand why I didn't want the French fries they gave me. (laughs) And then from there, you know, that kind of manifested into hormone issues when I got my menstrual cycle and going to countless doctors and then finally deciding I'm going to heal myself. So, so many years, as long as I can remember when I was little, I was, I was experiencing health issues. I know a lot of people listening feel that way too. You know, I've shared my story that it started when I was little. The truth of the matter is, you know, that sometimes the system fails us and we have to be bounced around from doctor to doctor to get to a place where we start to look inside. And when you do actually learn about your cycle, when you learn about your rhythms that you have, your two rhythms as a woman that you have, when you start to get in tune with your own system, that's when the answers come out. Like you said, I did some digging on my own and I was like, oh, I'm going to test this. This doesn't feel good to me. This does. We spend so much time searching outside of our body for answers when really the answers are all inside. And I just felt like that was really important to share for anyone who's listening because this is what Rachel does every day. She helps women learn about their bodies so they can empower their own healing journey, empower their fertility or non-fertility, lack thereof (laughs) if they don't want to get pregnant, right? Which is so important. So you guys share this episode with somebody. We're not done yet. We're going to dive in a little bit more, but share this episode episode with someone who you feel like has been struggling from this because it's so important for you to just empower this whole journey. I I kind of went off on a little rant there because I just get so passionate about diet culture and how it like breathe, how it just bleeds into healing journeys and has hurt so many of my clients by the time they get to me. But there's another aspect of hormonal imbalance affecting gut health. And that is when we talk about estrogen levels. So can you dive into estrogen levels and how it pertains to gut health a little bit more for us? So we actually have what is called the estrobilum, which is such a fun word. What's the word? Oh, estrobilum. Estrobilum. I like it. So it is in the gut. And basically what it is, is it's a collection of micro that help us regulate our estrogen levels. So it's very important that we take care of dysbiosis or any gut issues that we're experiencing in order for us to have a healthy estrobilum and for us to regulate those estrogen levels. So if we have too much estrogen in our body, 
This can lead to things like loose stools, bloating, other symptoms being painful periods, long periods, intense mood swings, headaches, feeling irritable around your period, clots in your period blood, breast tenderness. And if we have too little estrogen, that can also lead to some gut issues like just any abdominal discomfort, like bloating as well. Um, and that is because estrogen has this effect on the the production of bile. When estrogen is low, our production of bile decreases and bile is really important for aiding in that digestion. I also want to just go over a few other symptoms with low estrogen, just in case somebody is resonating. Low sex drive, breast shrinking, any pain with sex, not seeing fertile cervical mucus. Maybe you're feeling a lot of brain fog or having hot flashes. That tends to happen with any age or do you see it as people get older? Any age, because that was one of my big hormone imbalances was low estrogen. And that was, you know, when I was stuck in diet culture. So <laughs> mm -hmm. I was training for half marathons and I thought I was like the healthiest person ever. And I was destroying my hormone health. <laughs> yeah. Oh my, my, my. I've been there, done that. <laughs> Relating that to, to cycle syncing. Cycle syncing helps you to regulate your estrogen levels as well. And mm -hmm. implementing certain foods at certain times and understanding how to properly excrete that excess but also build healthy amounts of hormones. So I just kind of wanted to relate that connection there. Absolutely. So like, what about the opposite side? If someone's experiencing high estrogen levels, which I feel like I see more in my clients when they're coming with really bad gut issues, it is an excess or dominance of estrogen. So where, what do you see for that? Yeah. So estrogen dominance is very, very common. But the thing is, when we look at estrogen and progesterone, we really need to look at it. I like to say they're like in this salsa dance together. Like they're just like dancing with each other. Estrogen dominance can mean two things. It can mean that you have normal amounts of progesterone and you have a really high estrogen, mm -hmm. or it can mean that you have normal amounts of estrogen and you have really low progesterone. The best way to know is to test and understand what you need to focus your attention on. But yeah, estrogen dominance gets a little bit confusing. And I really feel that it's so important to explain that because what actually happened with me when I had my low estrogen, I also had low progesterone. So both were low, but it was still expressing as estrogen dominance. So I was doing all these things to lower my estrogen thinking that was the problem. And what actually ended up happening is I caused so many other <laughs> issues in my body. <laughs> so it kind of backtracked me a little bit. Yeah, that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Was there anything else you wanted to share on having healthy estrogen level, estrogen levels and why it's important for gut health there? That was kind of it in a nutshell, unless you wanted me to elaborate on anything. <laughs> no, I feel good about that. You know, three things that Rachel mentioned, we talked about how a hormonal imbalance or lack of cycle syncing or ignoring your cycle by overstressing over over exercising, not eating enough calories. How does it affect gut health? And the three things that she was very specific on was cortisol regulation, blood sugar imbalance, or you know, lack thereof blood sugar balance, and maintaining healthy estrogen levels. All three of these can be very much resolved by cycle syncing, by not ignoring the signs that are going on, by going through the 28-day cycle. All three of these, as we work through them and talk about cycle syncing, will be resolved when you hear about the how, when you learn about the how, how do we cycle sync? What are the ways we need to exercise? How do we eat food? What are the amounts of calories that an average woman may need? When does she need to increase her food? When does she need to decrease it? All of this stuff is exactly what we're going to talk about in Rachel's workshop inside the membership on August 17th. Even if you become a member later than August 17th, you still get access to see her webinar. So you get all of the past guest speakers and then the future guest speakers. We have two meetings a month. So she is going to teach us the how. How do we cycle sync via exercise, stress, and food inside the membership next month. So Rachel, just as we wrap this little podcast up, and thank you so much, by the way, because I know that there are so many women this is going to be so informative for. Is there anything else that you want to shed a light on specifically like cycle syncing or following this 28 day flow for anyone who's listening that any helpful tips or anything that we could talk about before we jet off? You know, I guess I just want to say that I understand that this could feel a little bit overwhelming at first, but I promise you 
that once you figure out how to cycle sync and you start getting in tune with your body and you start seeing, oh, okay, so this is how I'm supposed to feel in this phase and you actually feel that, it is truly so, so powerful. And ladies, like this isn't just something that's fun to do and understand. Like this is crucial to balancing your hormones and getting your gut in check and feeling your best. It will improve your mental health, your physical health, your gut health. And when we stop fighting against our body's natural rhythm, we are able to heal amazing things happen. So I just want to thank you, Jack, for having me. And I hope to see some of you guys on the membership call. Thank you so much, Rachel. As always, you provide us with the best information on our hormones. And I'm so grateful to have you in my life, in our life, on the podcast. We appreciate it so much. For any of you guys who also want to hear a little bit about of a success story. The last podcast I did with Ale, we took her from burnout to feeling amazing. And a lot of what we did had to do with cycle syncing. So you can go one podcast back and listen to Ale's testimonial and hear about how, you know, cycle syncing and getting away from burnout, this masculine, this heavy, you know, push stressful masculine mentality she was living in, how it was able to change her life in literally like three or four months. That's it. She was just really focused on it. And now it's like a part of her lifestyle. So listen to that. If you need to. And of course, join the membership if you can for next month to learn more about how. And then just as a friendly reminder to everybody, I have my Sedona retreat that is coming up in October, October 15th through the 19th. And there are only three spots left. So you can click the link below to learn more about that and would love to give you a big hug and nourish you there. So thank you again so much, Rachel, for being here. And until next time, you guys, happy healing.